Illinois Daily News. Hope everyone had a great weekend and thanks for joining me. First today in the news, on a federal level, an amendment to protect all state and tribal marijuana programs from federal interference now has 15 co-sponsors. When I last talked to you about this amendment, it had two co-sponsors, so a lot has happened over the weekend. Um, it will create a rule that no federal department of justice money can be spent on enforcing federal marijuana laws in any of the legal states or any of the tribal lands that have legal marijuana. So this is no enforcement, uh, no interstate commerce enforcement between those states is what it seems like, um, or they might still do that, but it doesn't seem very likely that you'll be able to enforce that if you're not creating programs where you're tracking people down in those states. At the same time, a Republican lawmaker are pu is pushing to create a rival reform measure, but this one doesn't seem like it has a lot of traction. Doug LaMalfa, the man I spoke about last week, who was bull bulldozing the illegal uh, pot farms in Northern California, is the one behind this one, and he would seek to undo a longstanding federal uh, order that protects medical cannabis. And given the Democratic control of both the House and the Senate and the presidency, and aside from that, just the widespread support among the American people for legal cannabis, which has a, is at about 66% based on the last survey, this doesn't seem like it's going to get any traction at all, and it seems like it's just for show for his constituents who are just old-fashioned anti-marijuana. But the federal amendment to keep the Department of Justice from enforcing federal laws in legal states does seem like it has a pretty strong chance of passing. Moving on. Biden's White House drug czar, a man named Rahul Gupta, it's come out that he worked for a marijuana business a few years ago for about a year as a consultant. This was called Holistic Industries, and it's a multi-state cannabis company. But given Biden's anti-federal legalization stance, um, a lot of people find this pretty interesting, and he got grilled pretty hard by the White House press corps about this. He also oversaw the implementation of the medical marijuana program in West Virginia, which is how they're saying he's qualified for this position. But just my personal opinion here, I feel like Biden dragging his feet on federal legalization is not really about his moral stance or his anti-weed stance. Uh, given his background, I feel like it's pretty likely that he's waiting to get his ducks in a row for the big players and the people who are giving him money to get their themselves ready for federal cannabis legalization and will support the legalization issue once the big companies that are putting money in his pocket are all aligned and ready to go on this but he doesn't want it rushed forward before then. And despite all his democratic rhetoric, I don't think he's for these small business grants and equity movements and limiting any company to 5% of the market. And some of the things that are in the Cannabis uh, Opportunities Administration Act that have been proposed. I think that those all sound great and I'm actually for some of them, but I think they're gonna get cut out and it's gonna be big business as usual. And I think that's why the president is dragging his feet and why he's taken on a in White House drug czar that is very familiar with the industry to get him ready for that. That's just my opinion, though. Uh, moving on to some good news in Kansas City. The Kansas, Kansas City mayor has filed an ordinance, his name is Quentin Lucas, Mayor Quentin Lucas, that Kansas City workers will not have to go through any pre-employment marijuana testing anymore, city workers for Kansas City. I think that's great news. There are some exemptions. Um, if you are a police officer, if you're a commercial driver, or you work with children, or vulnerable or disabled people, you will still have to have a marijuana test. I think it's a little bit Still part of that old fashioned thing that if you work with children or disabled people, you have to pass a marijuana test. But I do understand the police officer and commercial driving thing. Although this goes back to that other issue we've talked about, how there's no concrete or even decent test for testing on the spot uh, marijuana intoxication or being stoned, if you will. Um, so when you test someone for marijuana, they could have smoked two and a half weeks ago. It doesn't really affect their mindset at that moment. Once we have some sort of reliable testing for on the spot, whether you've done it in the past two to four hours or something like that, I think those kind of tests would make sense for working in, in almost any job. But the test we've got now, really, I think this makes a lot of sense. And I'd like to see a lot of cities and companies follow suit with this. Um, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, the FBI has limited their restrictions to marijuana use in the last year when it used to be a zero tolerance policy. So we are seeing a lot of movement on these issues. It's always exciting to see progress kind of taking its baby steps forward. Um, I do want to talk really quick about THCO here at Utoya. It's one of our new products. You've got to check it out. Uh, my personal experience, I'm not much of a smoker these days, but it is a fantastic experience. 
Um, you can go to utoya.com. You can search Utoya on Facebook or YouTube and look at our last live stream where we talked about it. And we will have a live stream coming up this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's pretty much it. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our uh, podcasts or live streams. Or sorry, podcasts. We don't really do podcasts. We do the news and live streams. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Have an excellent day.